The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. You know, we have Tom on from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing? Nico? Doing great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter is outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Primal Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning. I'm Nico DeHaan. Welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. And that's right, Nico, to recover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms. Good morning. I'm Paige Clark. That's a beautiful morning in downtown St. Petersburg. Kind of muggy, 80 degrees and high humidity, but uh, it August. is August. Yes. That's right. And please subscribe to our Health Signals newsletter. This is news you can use twice a month in your inbox with clickable links. And it follows our show outline. It's a lot of stuff that we want to make sure you get extra resources. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, please pick up our Primal Edge. Our One Shot Wonder is over 310 organic cell-ready liquid ingredients. Powered by nature's miracle molecule, fulvic and humic acid. Yeah, to get the good stuff in. And the bad stuff out. If you're up and at it, give us a call. Join the show, 877 927 Six six four eight. So hey. first thing I wanted to talk about today was the five G because uh, our we got a summit coming up. We got a summit coming up, and this uh, is free from August twenty sixth. That starts next Monday uh, through September first. And if, for and those of you that are, haven't ever joined a summit, really what it is is a great opportunity to get interviews from experts in that area, people that are really uh, wanting to make sure they get information out to you to help you with this kind of controversial subject. Yeah, here's a couple of the uh, experts. Uh, Deborah yeah. Lee Davis, she's brilliant and yeah. very well respected in the area. Patrick Wood. Yeah. Patrick Wood, agenda for total control. He really does uh, come up with some interesting facts and how the control is uh, there. And uh, this is one of the ways they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Of course, the 5G is what they're talking about is these huge, huge towers that are connected to your neighborhood by all these little towers all around your neighborhood. And mm -hmm. just about every pole in your neighborhood is going to have one of these microwave uh, right. uh, contraptions on it that is pulsing all the time. And my, one of the reasons I don't like microwave, I got rid of my microwave 10 Me years too. ago. Yeah. And uh, so I don't want that constantly in me. And uh, this seems like there's eight cities coming out next year. Luckily, we're not one of them, even though I see some of the activity here. Well, according to Jack Cruz, we mm -hmm. really are, do have a lot of 5G simply because of our proximity right. to a, a big Air Force base, mm -hmm. McDill, McDill, and huge. to the International Airport. Yeah. yeah. So this and Robert F. Kennedy has another thing. He's going to be talking about the danger of 5G for children. And yeah, as we know, children's brains have not really matured enough to really protect them from these damaging frequencies. Yeah. Now, uh, when you register for this, you will get some emails asking to buy some books and things like that, but the conference itself is free. Dr. But, Klinghart's going to be speaking yeah, as well. Yeah, you look at all mm -hmm. these people who are going to be talking. This is just, I mean, I don't know how you can get through all of it, but the thing is that uh, you'll get expert advice from these if people. If you try and catch it within a few days, you will actually be able to get it for free, or other yeah. than that, you have to order. Yeah, and I've attended a lot of these, and I've always done it for free. There's enough... Uh, uh, stuff to get that hey, there's Jerry money. Day. Uh, I, I've spoken with Jerry Day. He's, uh, he is very informed on how, what our rights are as far as mm -hmm. not committing or consenting to smart meters right. and other things. So, yeah. and he actually does live off the grid. He's a very interesting man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, some of the things you'll learn, too, is how to protect yourself once this stuff is up. There's many things you can do in your own home mm -hmm. to protect yourself, and this will give us a lot of clues. So, you know, this is a way we can do your, our own research and come up with our own solutions And perhaps for uh, in the next couple of weeks, as this show wraps up, we'll talk more about what we've learned. Yeah, so definitely. When I'm there. listening to these, I definitely want to pass that knowledge on, no doubt about it. Absolutely. So the second thing I wanted to go to was the lunches for our children. And, yeah, many uh, people's kids went back to school in the last week or so. Yeah. And I and think... find it. Here it is, right here. Huffington Post. 
that ranks the healthiest sandwiches to pack your the kids' The best and lunch. worst sandwiches for your kids, but perhaps maybe you shouldn't pack your kids' sandwiches. You know, my grandson doesn't mm -hmm. like sandwiches, uh -huh. so his mom has to cook for him, and, <laughs> you know, well, and she loves to cook for him. Certainly, that's I, great. I haven't had a sandwich in many, many years. Uh, the important thing I got out of this is that uh, the children are not eating very good, unfortunately. Yeah. So the first, you know... Well, first of all, I think if you're packing your kids' lunch, your kids got a, a step up. Perhaps. Versus using the school lunches. Yeah, and that's another problem, and I think right we'll choices. get into that a little bit, too, because uh, the school lunches and uh, me coming from Holland and going into Canadian school and having s Canadian lunches was very foreign to me. Mm -hmm. Even when I came to America, it was still foreign because I'd always bagged it. My mother had always fixed. I didn't like the American or Canadian food. It was just that much different. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, and, of course, I never really liked peanut butter, uh, you know, with the go-tos and the cheese and stuff like that. I like the cheese, Gouda cheese. I would think that Gouda would be yeah, a so big that thing. was a big part of uh, you know having a sandwich there with the Gouda cheese and with butter on it, and I think that probably saved my life. But uh, let's go into uh, what this is. Okay, so this was again presented by some registered dietitians who move, may or may not have your best interests depending on their training. I think their intentions generally are, but. Well, it says here, that ideally a sandwich offers some nutritional benefit and physically satiety so the children will not be distracted by hunger while also meeting the nutritional needs with the food that they enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this uh, Kathleen Reiner, who's a pediatric dietitian, says, I'd like to recommend including a source of daily dietary fiber as well as protein. They don't mention here that they're giving these people a, a lot of carbohydrates also. And the protein isn't that great. Uh, I think that the key is adequate and you know sufficient protein. Yeah. We really have so many people today are not getting enough protein at the right time. And not the right sources of protein Correct. is what I think. Yes. So here they let's go to the rankings themselves. Mm -hmm. Number one is a wrapped hummus with vegetables. So spinach and herb tortilla. Uh, classic oh, this hummus. is the ranking of what these three nutritionists together. Came up the with best. what was the healthiest. This is the healthiest. So we're right away we're we're doing away with the meat. That's for sure. Right away, scary. it's gone. This is scary. Yeah. Wrap with hummus and vegetables, spinach and herb tortilla, classic hummus and a sliced vegetable. Yeah, and I would say this would spike your sugar. Well, I, I you know I'm well, kind of I'm, I'm kind of back in love with Ray Pete again, and yeah. I'm not afraid of sugar. But what well, I I'm think, not talking what about I sugar. Missing what there I'm, is is what I'm talking about is the white bread or even yeah. the whole wheat bread. That's because of, of the hummus. Yeah, I mean, of, uh, not the hummus, but the, well, it's uh, the, the wrap. the worst than the sugar. The wrap. The, uh, basic sugar isn't too bad because you've got uh, a kind of balanced sucrose and, uh, and the glucose, and together. The glucose mm -hmm. together. So mm -hmm. that's a pretty good thing. But when you take carbohydrates and you th synthesize them into bread or tortillas or whatever, then you have most of the fructose. Well, I'm going to say that I don't think this is adequate protein for well, a child. No I, doubt. I, you know, there is no protein. For a growing child who you want to have a big... Yeah. And why, Beautiful, where are they getting brain. this protein from? They're getting well, from it from the, the hummus. hummus. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and, and then the question is, is that actually a complete protein? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Mm -hmm. So number two is really my favorite, tuna fish sandwich. A little tuna, a little mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so you got some protein and some fat there. Yeah, and it's pretty good fat uh, with the uh, tuna, if it's a decent, at least if it's a solid white tuna mm -hmm. and not the mix. It's a little, uh, either one is probably better than anything else they're fixing. Uh, let's go three, four, five, six, and seven after the break. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to tell people, first of all, if you want to make yourself healthy, this is the first thing to take in the morning, some primal edge. So get that during the break, and uh, we'll be right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back. Kids are back in school. Nico and I are talking about, uh, according to nutritionists, that rank the best and worst sandwiches for your kids' lunch. Maybe sandwiches are not the best thing for your kids' lunch, but as we go on, there's a picture of Nico's favorite, the tuna fish sandwich, and I kind of agree with him on this choice. Uh, that might be one of the better ones. It goes on to discuss deli chicken breast and cheddar sandwich. Um, and they, they do mention deli sliced rotisserie chicken breast, but uh, I think the chicken breast is probably not the best part of the chicken. Uh, rotisserie in a grocery store, probably not the healthiest because of all the people that are passing by, even though But notice that shield. it said deli sliced, and yes. then it says thin sliced mild cheddar, and I'm just going to jump over and we can mm -hmm. go over them, but then it talks about, in one of the final one, it says the cheese quesadilla, Mexican-style shredded four-cheese blend, and flour tortillas. Do you notice, because this is registered dietitians, they are really heavily trained to promote foodstuffs manufactured by, you know, instead of just saying, hey, get some cheese, they, they, they give you a suggestion for a brand, like a craft brand or... Yeah, and like uh, the number four is uh, turkey and Swiss cheese, and that's deli sliced uh, oven roasted turkey. Uh -huh. Well, turkey is probably the one of the worst birds to eat, and the breast is the worst part of the bird. It doesn't have any really good uh, stuff in it as far as... And it has tryptophan in it, so and, if and you want your kid to sleep after lunch, this is a good way to do that. And the fact that they said peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I'm kind of curious because aren't there so many schools that don't even allow you to bring peanut butter anymore because, because of, the, uh, of allergies? allergies. <laughs> I yeah. mean, you know... That's, that's but, another one, yeah. But, but, you know, again, maybe perhaps the best thing to give your kid is maybe leftovers from the meal the night before or there something. You go. Those How about might a be... nice big piece of chicken, chicken leg or something like that? Mm -hmm. I mean, those, those are things you can put in a lunch with no problem at all, seal it up, and he can even boil some water and... Uh, you know, have it hot if you wanted to. This is, it's a simple thing. Uh, peanut butter and jelly, yeah, that's bad. Ham and American cheese. Uh, again, deli smoked ham, uh, not a good thing in the last Again, one heavily already. processed. Maybe yeah. if you have a ham or, um, for like you said, a turkey or a chicken that you roast yourself, mm -hmm. not ones that have been pr 
you know, heavily processed. Yeah. So here it says uh, why the ranking came out this way. The hummus wrap top prices list because it's the only option that included vegetables as the main component. So that's the criteria they use. If it doesn't have the vegetables, it's not going to be number one, I guess. And that's a little concerning to me because I think it should be what is the source of protein for this child? And have you ever gone in restaurants lately and say what, the, what is their vegetable of the day? And they never have a vegetable of the day. It's either corn or it's squash. They don't have vegetables anymore. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, even <laughs> things that we normally don't consider vegetables now all of a sudden have become squash is never a vegetable. Here's another one for you. What's that? The plant-based protein was another plus. Ah. However, this lunch got points off for the wrap, as a specific wrap was selected. It contained, it contained hydrogenated oils. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Which are the real culprit for yeah, everything. And, uh, Sugar is not really the culprit. And I'm, like well, I said, I'm back in love with Well, it's definitely a big pain. culprit, and also it's in everything. I mean, you can't make mayonnaise without some oil. Right. You can, I guess, if you do it healthy-wise. Well, uh, Mark Sisson's has, yeah, has um, avocado. avocado oil, which still uh, is a PUFA. Yeah, it's still, I wouldn't mm -hmm. use it. I wouldn't use it at all. So this just goes to show you what's going on. But this agenda of getting meat out and uh, having manufactured food started way, way long ago, didn't it? It sure did, but it's in full force now. There is a real push to, um, to get us to accept what they're selling, and that is we don't deserve to eat the, the, the king's meats, right? Good point. And um, you can't shoot the king's deer, that's for sure. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, again, I think what you want to do is serve your children the very best food because they are precious and need the healthiest foods. And the healthiest foods are going to have some of all, of all of the food groups, I think, probably for children. You can get, get them all. But I think that maybe a sandwich is already doomed because of the excessive bread. That I mean, even Ray Pete, who who actually loves sugar and says ice cream can be very well placed, mm -hmm. uh, and not a fan of breads and grains mm -hmm. because of their anti-nutrients, which we've been sharing with yeah. you all for all. So, well, sugar is not the culprit unless you... Pair put it with it the oils. In, well, pair it with the oils and pair it with bread and pair it with vegetables. I mean, <coughs> all these out things. Of yeah, it's an out-of-balance system, so <coughs> it doesn't really work. I and without, switch. with not adequate protein. Yeah, so the, I switched over to this site called uh, Thou Shalt we Not Discuss question, Nutrition. Though. Oh, we got a question, What are the better sources of tuna besides canned tuna? Well, probably getting it from a fish market if you're going to have it. But tuna is a animal that's high on the food chain. <clears throat> meaning it's a predator so it eats a lot of fish and a lot of fish contain mercury and other pollutants right so uh, this is uh, a way of uh, adding to the burden in a sense if you eat too much of it mm -hmm. but your body can process a lot so if you eat some sushi once a week it's not going to hurt you but yeah if you have tuna fish sandwiches from cans all the time then it's probably not a good choice but yes. you need to mix things up anyway who wants tuna every day that's exactly right and and one of the things that uh, Jack Cruz feels about um, seafood, actually, more of your shellfish come prepared with the selenium and so forth to help us detoxify some of these metals. So, yeah, and that's why I like grouper and, uh, you know, some of the bottom feeders that feed on uh, the crustaceans and things like that. Correct. I mean, uh, our black grouper loves lobsters and And, and they're the eating their shells, and those shells are really there nutritious for us. A lot of people will actually take the shells of shellfish to make a stew. Huh. You know, like a broth. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So this site I started watching is I support Gary.com and Gary uh, Fetka is uh, from Australia. And he got a lot of crap from the community because he was uh, treating diabetes. And he would go into the hospital and he was horrified what they were feeding the diabetics. Mm -hmm. Ice cream for breakfast, uh, cereal for breakfast, and all these things. And he starts talking, him and his wife both are advocates for really eating good food, and he's pretty much a car carnivore, you know, eating mostly meat, just like I do. Uh -huh. And uh, he came up with the, uh, the, this, the talking about, and I, we've talked about this before, like the Kellogg's cornflakes, how that all came about, uh -huh. and why these people were driving these new foods that we never had before. I mean, we had never in Holland heard of cereals. Right. Uh, you didn't get those until you landed here. I, well, I landed in Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was 1955 or 56 when my mother brought home the Kellogg's cornflakes. And I always talk about this because it was a wonderful thing for the women's movement. Sure it this was. This was just before the women's and movement. And what was the women's movement's actual 
what was it actually designed for? Well, to get people, all everybody working so the kids are educated by the government. That's exactly. what I think. Exactly, yeah, to separate, create yeah. um, a, a disconnection from children, from their parents. Yeah, I always say, what kind of society gives their children to strangers? Mm -hmm. We do. It's mm -hmm. a very dangerous thing. Yeah, for sure. So he talked about the review and uh, the ideology of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and their subsequent influence on the nutrition and science and dietary guides worldwide. Hey, that just made me think of something. Okay. Have you heard of that um, new series called The Family on Netflix? I've heard of it. I haven't watched it. Okay, it really kind of talks about how the, the, some of the, the Christian prayer group had an influence on politics and perhaps is another one of those infiltrations that we have in the bigger scheme of who's really running the show mm -hmm. but this makes me think about it was this an avenue to control the masses into what was actually healthy or is it a true belief well we know that uh, Kellogg himself was kind of a uh, psychologist he uh, was in a sanitarium treating people he thought the answer to the self-indulgent society was really bland food yes and exactly bland yeah. food and okay, we've would... got to take a short break yeah. we'll be back for this. like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balance results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. So I'm reading from an article by... Uh Dr. Uh, uh, Fetke. 
from Australia. And he says, over the last four years, I've become fascinated by the history of the vegetarian, vegan, plant-based dietary guidelines. So much of this has come from the ideology based on the writings of prophetess Ellen G. White, the co-founder of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and her health reform visions in 1863, encouraging the abstinence of alcohol, tobacco, spices, tea, coffee, and meat. Her belief that it was the duty of the church to actively engage in public health education, control desires, and basser passions. To now, set the church apart from other major religious organizations. But isn't that interesting? These are kind of the things that are considered vices. Also, they could also be considered like the king's food. <laughs> Indeed. And she says two uh, uh, grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by the Creator. A religious life can be more successfully gained and maintained if meat is discarded. So this uh, diet eliminates the intense activity, the lustful proprieties, and enfeebles the moral and uh, spiritual nature. So, this, yeah, I mean, this kind of goes along with what you were saying before. Both Ellen G. White and Dr. John Harvey Kellogg, right. which, by the way, you know we have the Kellogg Mansion. He has a house right here. In oh, he's got mansions all over the place. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> they advocated absence from flesh eating to help dampen impure thoughts and animal propensities. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that Kellogg, uh, John Harvey Kellogg, not his brother, uh, who invented the machinery to extrude all these uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 grains, he thought that masturbation was the evil, and this was one way. Once you have a bland, blind, a bland life with food, your urges kind of go away, and you become. Sounds you know. like you kind of die. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it to me. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, but I'm I'm looking at this kind of like from an over agenda, and what we've been sort of suggesting when you see this going on, and what we know from David Dubine and the grand solar minimum coming and the expected food shortages, could this be a way to get the masses to accept a starvation food? Well, remember, if you're talking about the mid-18th century, we were out into a mini ice age at that time, mm -hmm. just kind of coming out of it. So mm -hmm. people really were forced to eat a lot of these foods. Remember that the food changed when the first number one thing that you go out to find is gone. Now you start looking for other things. And because it saved your life, you kind of pass this on to your relatives, your neighbors, and your children. Look how important these grains are. We can keep them for years just in case. But they didn't make the switch back. Right. See, there's a time to reap and harvest, and there's a time to pull it back. And the That's time right. to pull it back is when nature says, I don't have it anymore. You've mm -hmm. got to pull it back. You can't say, well, I'm going to starve because I only eat a cow. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. We, you know, the big driving force in human beings is to live. Mm-hmm. Right. So this is just another thing. And I'm going to throw a bunch of these articles in here about this in the next newsletter so you can follow along with this. I don't want to spend too much more time on this, but the global influence of the Seventh-day Adventist Church on diet has been huge. And uh, it's been ongoing, and it's still going on, and now we still see these products po popping up. And I see a lot more advertising about plant-based foods and getting rid of the meat. And this is how we're going to survive. This is part of the global agenda for the, the warming that they say is going on, which, sure, there's warming, but there's also cooling, folks. And I think we're heading into something uh, a lot different. And I want to just uh, preface this because I have this new study yeah, let me just read this while you're finding yeah. it. You know, this emphasis on health ministry from the Seventh-day Adventists um, led to the development of, of sanitariums in the mid-19th century. Uh, and these facilities most notably began in Battle Creek, Michigan, you know, kind of the home of the, of the cereal, and initiated the development of vegetarian foods such as breakfast cereals and analog meat. <laughs> I hate that word. But... It, it, it still, the Seventh-day Adventist uh, church still operates a handful of food production centers around the world, key world being production. And the author says, I just have to interrupt for one moment to explain that Ellen G. White came to Australia between 1889 and 1900 to set up the church, a printing press, schools, and a university, and a cereal company just like Kellogg's. Sanitarium Health and Well-Being is a wholly owned processed food company of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and as such pays no taxes. It's based in Australia and New Zealand and it makes breakfast cereals, liquid breakfasts, peanut butters, soy and almond milks, 
and frozen desserts. And one of the things that Gary did, uh, you know, he went into the hospitals and was telling these people, don't eat this hospital food, and he was bringing them food, and the dietitians in the hospitals started suing him. And they got him disbarred from the medical community for a while that he couldn't talk about diet to his patients who were diabetics. So and they had to again. I, I yeah. I, you have I to follow the school or the hospital uh, and buy their foods from the processed food manufacturer. There you go. Mm. So. So Could this there other be a, co a conspiracy? Yeah. So up in the Telestrator, is. I have a little thing here. China is preparing for a cooling planet. Now China has weather records going back thousands and thousands of years. These records clearly show solar maximum and solar minimums. Their records uh, have the Earth heading for a Dalton-type minimum in the next 20 years, perhaps worse. Mm -hmm. So China is on top of this because they have the records going back. And remember, we talk about the the white rice from the Chinese. They figured this out a long time ago. This is their emergency. Food. It's not the food that they generally would eat. Right. And when the solar minimum is gone and the weather changes again and you can start hunting again, the rice goes way down. That's exactly right. They've been reestablishing the fabled <coughs> Silk Road supply chain. While the UN tries to steer the world into a warming cycle, China is preparing for a cooling planet which is why I myself question the UN's motive. Well, who doesn't question the UN's motive? Yeah, and of course, on the other hand, China had a terrible growing season this year. Of course, we did too. Uh, flooding in cropped areas and below normal temperatures. And the swine flu has been de de uh, devastating to the pig farmers, and that's still going on. China has billions to feed. This year's crops will not feed any of them. So they're in dire straits with food, and we, we, uh, I think we all we are starting to feel the pinch. You start seeing in the grocery stores, even the packaged food is it's now shrinking. It's shrinking, and the prices are going up. Mm -hmm. So instead of the 8 or 12 ounces, you're having a 6-ounce thing, and, and the price, the is, price still is the up. same. And this is not what the news, uh, the news is not driving any of this. You don't hear this on CNN or Fox or MSNBC or anything like that. You hear this on the chats and things. People are talking about this in social media and things like that. So uh, there's many things like that uh, going on. Uh, I found something that is an introduction to the Banting diet, which is kind of a low-carb diet from years ago. But when we get back, I want to talk about the, the, the state of uh, health in the United States and other countries because city life. And that's a great conversation because we opened the show talking about the 5G summit. And one of the things that we learn, and Jack Cruz has taught, Nico and I, is that the density is the big issue, the density. So many people with a cell phone and so many ways that you're getting bombarded with devices that are tagging into these 5G. So I think that'll be interesting to talk about what's going on with city life and how's it impacting our health? Yeah, and the city life comes about because of jobs. Mm -hmm. Because you have to work for a living to, uh, you know, you can no longer really be a small farmer. It's very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Although some people are doing that, which is great. But uh, we are forced to follow our schools and our work. Yes. We used to follow the food. Everything has changed. But some things are changing, and people are homeschooling and yep. finding other ways to go around. So there's yep. hope. We'll, we'll be right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And welcome back. You know, while living in cities has its perks, it can take a big toll on our mental health. Uh, compared to rural residents, uh, researchers have found that urbanites are 21% more likely to have anxiety disorders, 39% more likely to have mood disorders. A 2017 meta-analysis has also found the rates of the following mental health conditions were higher for those living in urban areas. That's PTSD, anger management, generalized anxiety disorder. Yeah, so uh, what's with this explanation? Uh, according to psychiatrists, urban living gives the brain a workout, which alters how we cope with stress. And as we know, stress is really the root of all dis-ease or being out of um, Yeah, and ease. a certain amount of stress here and there is what we normally would go. We were chased by a big bear. Uh, we uh, don't have enough water. we got to go to the creek to haul it or whatever it is. And uh, we have those stresses today, too. But the constant stress, you know, uh, when you're being stressed on a continuous basis. You stay in the fight or flight response. Yeah, you stay in that response, and that uh, chemically has a disaster in our body. There's a lot of things going on that save our life uh, if you use it for 30 seconds or a couple of minutes or even an hour. But now if you're having it 24 hours a day, there's all problems that come uh, from that. That's right, and city life can chip away at your psychological immune system, which can be precarious for those with a family, uh, family history of mental illness. And according to psychologists, the environmental stress can increase their risk of developing uh, a psychiatric condition such as anxiety, depression, or bipolar. Again, I think we can see, too, what's going on, the frequencies, the man-made frequencies are so high in city life that it's very hard to they sort of drum out nature. Yeah, and of course, uh, living in these l big, huge structures now, don't get me wrong, I love going to New York, and I love these big cities to go to and walk around and spend a few days in. Uh, even living there maybe for a year or so would be exciting. But uh, I love the tranquil feeling of the outdoors. And even though we're not in a huge city here, we're in an area that has 20 million people sprawled Very over congested, the, very, yes. a very dense, population yeah. dense. So those, these stresses are here for us in this city. Exactly. And um, what's interesting is uh, young adults, especially millennials, often feel burnout. 
a stressful state of mental, physical exhaustion that can squeeze the joy out of life, uh, no matter what your age. Yeah, it says here older generations may view these millennials as, as incompetent uh, adults who shy away from responsibility, and that seems to be the case, doesn't mm -hmm. it? But as uh, uh, Anne Helen Peterson wrote for uh, BuzzFeed, millennials have errand paralysis, and they always seem to be working. They think they should be working. They sh should be working. Yeah. yeah. And many of these young adults never sleep. And as we know, sleep is key to our natural rejuvenation and repair. And this belief may be intensified, adding to the psychological hardships of urban dwelling. Yeah, not only can city life affect your mental well-being, it can also affect your physical. That's right. Living in a city will affect your sleep quali quality and ultimately your cardiovascular health as a result. Well, because you, you have more pollution in the air. Your water may be compromised uh, with fluoride. There was a big new study coming out on the BBC about the fluoride too, causing uh, mm -hmm. deformed We've been uh, liver, saying. <laughs> liver and, and uh, kidneys. The two things that are uh, kind of trying to make us healthy by filtering out these bad things, but and apparently these fluorocarbons uh, really uh, very uh, very hard on the very hard for our body to deal with. Yeah. You, you know, if you didn't know better, you'd wonder what yes, are they, they trying to kill us? Yeah, yes. <laughs> if you didn't know better, <laughs> cough, cough. Crowded city life can also make us more prone to contracting viruses, especially during the cold and flu seasons. Studies have also found that people living in urban areas often eat too much processed and fast food, which put us, puts them on a greater risk for weight gain, high blood pressure, and diabetes. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to admit that... Um, there's something, I mean, even when I drive here, because I live in the woods, mm -hmm. you know, when I, you know, again, it's still suburban woods, but, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I kind of go into a, like a little retreat. retreat, and then I come out, and I drive here in the morning, and the sun's rising, and I listen to oldies, mm -hmm. and I come into the city, and we're, you know, I'm starting to bustle a little I bit. I see the east, and the sun is rising, and, and you know, St. Petersburg kind of looks like, oh, the city, it's kind of exciting, and then you look at it, and it's like uh, every building has a buzzer to get in, and... Yeah. You know, it, it you feel the congestion. There's an excitement, and I think perhaps city life is okay for little doses, but you well, need to have some way to get out of it. You know, Ellen and I have been talking for the last couple of years about <clears throat> when everything is done in about three years with her work and mine. <clears throat> we said, well, we'll get out of this urban environment, maybe go live in New Mexico or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you've been saying that. And, uh, you know, I'm, certainly it's on my mind, and we're looking at places, and we go out there a lot. And uh, then it comes into mind, okay, now I've got this beautiful house. i got 80 acres, and now what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, where's where's you my know, TV? Where's the other things that keep us occupied? You know? Yeah. Uh, and that well, makes you me can wonder. still have your TV, even out oh, Of course there. you can. Then. However, I think you, I, I think you'd be kind of like my brother. Um, you take up um, primitive tool making or mm -hmm. something, or some kind well, of hobby. your life changes, there's no doubt. But yeah. the, uh, of course, I'd be doing some of the same things that do, I do when I go on vacation, which is the exciting part, the four-wheeling and mm -hmm. going out trekking and looking for Bigfoot and <laughs> right. all, all that, those kind of things, too. Yeah. So uh, spending too much time surrounded by con concrete can lead to a bad case of city living blues. So let's talk about what we can do. Let's spend more time outdoors. Like I always say, be an outsider. Not an insider, but be an outsider. Yeah, that's right? certainly one. Even, uh, and uh, that's going on in my neighborhood. People go walk in morning, noon, and night around the, uh, mm -hmm. the neighborhood. I like I'm, the whole idea of, I think down here in St. Pete, there's some office places that actually give you the, they're outdoor offices, mm -hmm. so you can have like a station and and where you work, but you bring your laptop. So they're still connected to all this, but at least they're outdoors. Right. With grass. A little, yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of a little store, open storefront type of idea. Correct. Yeah. Uh, connecting to your neighborhood can make you feel more like uh, more like home, but the creating era, a community. Yeah, but the era of social media may be less likely to ask your neighbors for small favors. I've often said that. Yeah, you know, I know my neighbors on each side, but beyond that, we kind of just wave at them and it's we true. really don't know them. I don't think that we have that same connection with our with our neighbors as we used to and I think that's we don't have tribes really. We think our tribes are what's on the other side of our computer. Yeah and that would all change as soon as the lights go out for an extended period of time and right. we don't have any gasoline and then we we're kind of forced back into that and then that would change the dynamics of everything wouldn't it? It sure would yeah. and it's no surprise that exercise, exercise is a great way to kind of 
push off that stress of living in an urban life. And studies show that working out can make us happier, improve our immune system, and help prevent heart disease. Yeah. However, the business uh, and expense of city living may pre prevent us from working out as much as we'd like. Well, not really. You can go for a walk anywhere, and that's gonna, usually not going to cost you. It's like not like driving, where mm -hmm. they're turning the roads into toll roads. You know, now at least we can still step out the door without paying a fee. Right. So the bottom line of urban living, it can bring as much stress as it does excitement. So sometimes it's all about balance. And knowing how to prevent city life from affecting your physical and mental health uh, can make a world of difference. And making sure you find the time to reconnect with nature because city life kind of pulls you away from it, right? Yeah, so what they're really talking about is that exercise, talking with your loved ones, finding a community that can give you your mood a boost. And these are definitely uh, benefits that yeah. you can use to kind of uh, put the city life back where it belongs. That's and right. you're going to be living nicely. All okay. right, we'll be back after this short break. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates to my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Think or Swim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. Okay, this is our last segment, kind of fast. Uh, Keto-friendly alcohol drinks that exist. And these, I'm fond of alcohol, and I think it works really good with a low-carb or keto-type style diet. Vodka, definitely, uh, the kind of vodka... Tito's is the one that, Tito's Handmade Vodka gets a lot of high scores in this area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Purity is the one I use, which yeah. is really nice, too. Mm -hmm. This is hand uh, hard sel seltzer, which I guess had some, uh, I don't know what kind of... This uh, is a... It's a, it's a simple low-carb drink uh, which up. vodka and seltzer water and lots of lemon and lime 
And this particular one, this White Claw, it seems to be very popular, has different flavors. It almost tastes just like sparkling water. Uh, Could light be dangerous. Beer? I don't drink light beer. Uh, I think the lightness uh, that they take out of it uh, isn't, isn't that great. I like mm -hmm. uh, these micro brews and a good heavy beer is what I like. Right, if you're going to have the beer, get yeah. those the nutrition yeah. like the vitamins in a dark uh, beer. Don, uh, Don, Don Julio. Julio Tequila. Yeah. Yep. Tequila is good. Uh, whiskey is good. You know, when you start getting into the colors, that's the resin of the wood mm -hmm. may cause some problem for some people. But uh, straight whiskey or rum or even scotch, I think, is good. Of course, our favorite is wine. Uh, we're not drinking as much Cabernet these days, but we're drinking a lot of Pinots. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing is gin. That was probably, if you're in England, probably one of the top picks. But these are all good picks. And I have found that uh, on a type of carnivore, keto, paleo, primal style diet, alcohol actually works more like medicine. Uh, not if you drink five or six drinks, but if you have one or two, mm -hmm. it seems to do really well, and you don't have the drawbacks than if you're eating a higher-carb diet. I think it just causes more problems with It says to get creative with your ice cubes and your garnishes to spice them up a bit. It really, where we get into trouble with the carbohydrates and alcoholic drinks is in the mixers. Yes. Right. So perhaps... Um, and that's not to endorse a stiff, heavy drink. It's an idea. I, I mean, I'm a big fan of adding seltzer or, or sparkling well, water to I dilute it. I say medicinal. Uh, why do you think all these uh, elderly people go into the bar for happy hour and have these martinis? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the vodka or gin or whatever you're using and very little else. I told you I've got that book. And I need to bring that into good. the show, the one, Drink Your Way to Health. You it go. was a book written. Okay. So. I like it all. Well, cheers, guys. Yeah, have thanks a great for sticking rest around. of your week. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.